This is the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Um, dude, did you read the story about that Watertown duder? Oh, yeah. What the? Oh, just... That's right. I woke up to that. This is wild. Just days after Green Lake County officials noted that the search for Ryan Borgwart would continue until a body was found in Big Green Lake. It seems they don't believe there's a body to be found at all. Now Green Lake County Sheriff uh, Mark Podol says the Watertown man likely faked his own death and is somewhere in Europe. <laughs> we renewed investigative efforts in hopes of finding new information that might guide our search. On October 7th, 2024, Podol said on Friday, as we began that effort, we soon learned, with the assistance of the Mid-States Organized Crime Information Center, that Ryan's name had been checked by law enforcement in Canada on August 13th. We searched further and learned that Ryan had reported his passport lost or stolen and had obtained another passport issued May 22nd. His original passport was easily located by his family. Scandalous. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. With this information, we made contact with Ryan's wife and we were like, sorry, dude. A uh, 45-year-old has two kids attending Lakeside Lutheran High School in Lake Mills and another at Trinity St. Luke's in Watertucky. He was originally reported missing August 12th after he didn't return from a kayaking trip to Big Green Lake. The Green Lake County Sheriff now believes that he meticulously planned his own disappearance. Dive teams from Bruce's Legacy, a volunteer organization that performs search and recovery missions for individuals believed to have drowned, found little indication of a body in Big Green Lake. All indications that Borg Wart drowned appear to have been planned in advance. The expertise of Keith Cormican and Bruce's legacy cannot be overstated, Podol said. His dedication and persistence in the search efforts was unmatched. And finally, his confidence that there was not a body located in the west end of Big Green Lake was vital in changing the course of this case. Keith is certainly one of the best in the world at his craft. High five to Keith. There are several indications that Borg Wart left the country and he's now believed to be in Europe. Uh, Yeah, he's just like, see you, kids. (laughs) I'm going to the red light district. Yeah, enjoy mourning my death. Our investigation has many more steps to put this puzzle together. We are working with the Wisconsin Department of Criminal Investigations, Mid-States Organized Crime Information Center, and the FABI. As we continue to unravel the digital information available and provide the clearest possible picture of what has occurred. At this time, we believe that Ryan is alive and likely in Eastern Europe. We have located things such as the replacement of the hard drive on the laptop, the clearing of browsers on the day of the disappearance, syncing with the laptop with the iCloud on August 11th, photos of passports, inquiries about moving funds to foreign banks, change to email addresses associated with financial accounts on the day of the disappearance, communication with a woman from Uzbekistan. Oh, poop, that's where I... <laughs> a new $375,000 life insurance policy in January 2024 and a purchased airline gift card. Do you think there's really a broad in Uzbekistan, or did he get scammed? Due to the discovery of this new evidence, we are confident that Ryan is not located in Green Lake, and we have ended all search efforts associated with Green Lake. Uh, Podal urged individuals with knowledge of Bargwart's specific whereabouts to contact his office. He also encouraged the public and media to provide time and space to the fam. Dude. Dude. Straight gone girl. What a doucher. Yeah, dude. If you look at the picture... Of his family. I know. He looks miserable right yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Right? Totally. You know, Look and this him. sucks because the daughter's like holding on to his arm and he yeah. just looks like he's got kind of that head tilt like, oh God, I don't want to be here. I know. With a, uh, yeah, a snit smile. You guys see that? Mm-hmm. Am I wrong? Is that what you picked up off oh, that Oh, yeah, I know. The energy mm. in that picture is terrible. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, the rest of the family appears joyful. He looks... Like, like a fake smile, like and it's he's like very uncomfortable. Yeah, it looks that that uncomfortable. That, yeah, but you know, damn. So he wasted all mm. them as people's times, and not to mention your kids have been mourning your death, you asshole. So what kind of? Uh, I wonder if you can get a charge for faking your oh, death. Yeah. I mean, outside. Oh of, hell yeah! I wonder what it is. Well, and plus he's gonna get fraud charges. Oh yeah, that that I get. Yeah, because he was trying to take a. I wonder if he took out the policy for his family. I highly doubt it. But, you know, if he took it out for them so that he feels, like, a little better about giving the money away, or if that was just going to be his nest egg that he's going to live off of. I don't know. Well, how would he collect it? You know, 
Uh, exactly. I don't you know? know. That's why he must have had something. He was going to try to get it from, you know, have it go into a different account. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Crazy. Over- yeah. Do you not realize that all the things, you have a complete footprint and a path. Oh, yeah. Every like, time you turn that thing on. Deleting your browsing history does nothing. It does nothing. It's just that you don't see it. It's like sweeping everything under a rug. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You, you're. It's all there. I know. I was like, how, you can't. All don't the think crazy you, stuff I search, it's there. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> nobody even wants to look at your browsing history. <laughs> the cops would be like, well, Actually, mine's, mine gets sent to me, so it's not uh, so much. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to investigate my friends. But like. Oh, Air Force. How group. are you thinking you're going to get away with it? It's not 1930 no. anymore. You can't fake your no. death and leave your family. Well, the what he could have done. The, the problem is people get caught with the computer stuff. That's that's always what happens. The second you start searching something, yeah. doesn't anybody know to go to a library and just look at that stuff, like in a different town? <laughs> if you're in Madison, go to Milwaukee for the day, go to a library, look on their browser. Even then they're going to find, they're going to figure it out on your phone that you went to Milwaukee and that you went to the library. They're going to have well, footage that's of you. You, you, you know what I'm phone. saying? Yeah, yeah. You got to do all those things. Like, leave your phone. All that. You got to act like it was like you just came out of the woods. You know, leave your phone, all that stuff. Even when you leave and you don't have your phone on you. You know, if you have a Nest camera, you got to think about that. You got to undo that. You have to think about every little thing. Right. Or you could just get a divorce. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Or just avoid it. and Like it's wild. Yeah, I don't understand what the... What, and the just, stupidity it, of thinking you're going to get away with it. And then you wasted all these people's time and resources. Yeah, that could have been doing something, else. For, uh-huh. something for real. Yeah. Yep, 100%. Why don't... You know, I wonder... I, just how long... He could have probably got away with it a little bit better if he had went into the ocean. Then there's a chance that your body would never come up. You know what I mean? Right. Because there's so many things in there to eat you. But... You know, he should have done, planned a trip or something like that, and then just off he goes, you know? Right. Hey, we're on this trip, and we're going to go with, you know, you can't. You got to go by yourself. That'd be weird if you went by yourself, and all of a sudden you- Or just man up and get a divorce. Hold on. No, 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 no. Let's, <laughs> like... let's stay on the fake death tip here. I'm not <laughs> totally, th- not seeing this guy is totally wrong here. You know? God. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I read that story. I was like, what? I know. What? How would you like to be his wife that this guy would fake his death in order to get away from I you? I know, and those poor kids. I know. There's obviously some other stuff going on with this dude. Yeah, he's, there's a, there's like a, what, how old is that kid? I want to see a picture 15 of 15 or 16? Uzbekistan broad. Yeah, Uzbekistan. Don't they have like unibrows and stuff? That's that's so funny because I was like, does this bitch have a mustache? Yes, she looks like <laughs> what's that frau or whatever from, yeah. from <laughs> Dodgeball. Yeah, <laughs> deadliest woman with a dodgeball. <laughs> Uzbekistan women. I'm gonna look up. I'm on the same thing. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's not good, you know. But everybody's beautiful in their own way, Lance. Yeah, well. Don't. I remember when models were good looking. Oh, no. Re- <laughs> okay. Well, what do you think? It was you tell me. It's. I mean, oh, there's a unibrow right there. I know. Did you see it? It's a doubly landlocked country. Um, so is he over, is he in Uzbekistan or was he just chatting with the broad from there? Like, I don't know. Cause the implication of the article it, it, is that he left for this broad, right? Yeah. And went all the way to the stands, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan. Wonder how the internet is over there. It's patchy service. Oh, I'm sure. Oh. I can imagine it's not the <laughs> Dude. Well, I, you know, how does that even happen? I'm so curious of what he went to Uzbekistan. He goes, you know what I'd like to do is go <laughs> live in a third world country. Right. right. I mean, I it's not idea. great there. What does he think he's going to go there and then all of a sudden? Yeah, it, but how the hell did uh, 
the other Baskins and guy. That, he got away with it. Who did? That uh, Carol Baskins' husband. He got away with oh, it. Oh, yeah. He disappeared, That's and he actually right. did it. And then he almost put her in the ringer because some producers wanted to say she did it. Right. Uh, that, yeah, the I remember Tiger when we King. talked to her. Yeah, yeah and, she, and was, she was like the nicest lady. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, oh, man. Mm-hmm. Basically, you know, they were asking her questions. They kind of, Remember she was saying they kind of led into those yeah. different things? Yeah. She thought she was under the guise that it was just, a, oh, it's just about tigers. Right. They were trying to help the tigers. Yep. That was her her whole thing was about yes. help, helping those animals. And she, they were recording stuff like halfway through mm-hmm. and asking her in, intermittently about these things. And then they edited it to make it look. That's that's right. That's not cool, man. Hello, JJO. You have that uh, address, uh, like a P.O. box or something, I think. What? For your uh, life insurance. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you still have to have your name tied yeah, yeah. to a P.O. box. Yeah. And watch, it's like the movie Hostel, and they kill him for cash. No kidding. Like, and there's, isn't there like some, uh, how do I say this nicely? Do I have to say it nicely? You don't have to say it nicely. Isn't there like some jihadi issues over there where it's like, I, would I don't think. know, you're going to get your head sawed off? Yeah, the, the, they're not keen on white dudes from Watertown. Right, that's what. Yeah. I would, well, <laughs> you know? I mean. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, Westerners. I would think. Well, and it's, he's just coming over there and impregnating their broads like it's going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. Here I am. <laughs> Insurance. <laughs> I'd like to know the, the, the bank that he goes to that doesn't yeah. have a dirt floor. Right? <laughs> he's trying to get 375000 I don't how, think he thought this one out. He I, got. How are they going to find him? It's crazy. I, yeah. I, I can't wait for an update. Oh, yeah. This He's is got... for sure going to be on Dateline. You know it's going to be oh, on Dateline. Oh, they will definitely... Uh, Keith Morrison, ex- baby. Yeah, extradite him. That son of a bitch. It's going to be a Hallmark movie. It's going to be everywhere. Dude, why would you go... That's like the cradle of filth. <laughs> that area is not... My God. Like, I'm going to go to a war drawn country. Right. Why? It's not like you're leaving for like... Spain or and again I feel bad because like you know maybe it's it's probably just his brain you know and this poor lady and his or family right, the family looks nice it's, enough and yeah normal enough and whatever yeah I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he's the one with he's uh, the problem yeah yeah me too I would <laughs> I'm gonna agree with that too <laughs> yeah it sucks Hi, Chihuahua. So I hope, yeah, those kids are going to need some. Yeah, because then they, well, hopefully nobody knows about it, you know. I mean, some that's kids. one of the things. Well, when, there when are these... freaking pictures plastered everywhere. And we're talking about it. But, I mean, <laughs> I always sit there and think, like, maybe not say everybody who it is and just, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes there's news that doesn't need to be reported. Well, you know I, mean? I mean, Lake Mills, that you well, you know, that whole area, it's. Jefferson County, everybody knows everybody. Oh, I know. It's not like they were going to avoid it. So. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Oh, well. Take a few days off, kids. Yep. You have Auntie D's permission. <laughs> there you go. Jesus. <laughs> Uzbekistan. Yeah. Of all the places. God. And, like, how did he meet this broad on the internet, too? Like, was he seeking her out? Yeah, I don't know. It's just nuts. You can't trust anybody. Uh, I, okay, so <laughs> I'm, just, I'm I still know. thinking it. It's, I'm like, dude, what were you thinking? You're not going to get away with that. You can't. You can't get away with it nowadays. You just can't. Oh man, addresses. Yeah, all the email addresses have changed. They're gonna see all that stuff. Yeah, you're not getting. <laughs> If I just if I delete the, it's not there anymore, and it's just like you have, your IP address is attached. They can see exactly what you did, how long you. Were- well, and think about that poor wife. I know. When they were like, "Hey, he reported his passport missing," and she's like, "No, it's here where it always is." Oh, they got a new one, and then that moment of like right. gut wrenching burn in your stomach of like, "What the hell?" Mm-hmm. Uh, How are you going to work that day and stuff? I mean. I don't think I would. I mean, I know I get that, but that's like a. Right, because then you're like, what else? Welcome to L.A., baby. 
what else was I lying to him about? Yeah. How, you know what I mean? I mean, and yeah. You start going down that rabbit hole. Right. And then you got to explain to your kids that. Like, my whole has my whole life been a lie with this dude? And, right. Yeah. Totally. And they got to wonder why the hell it, you know? Yeah. Well, the whole thing is it's all him. It's totally all him. He's the ding dong that decided to do it. He's the one that has the emotional problems. I don't care if you, if, oh, you're, I'm upset about my situation. Well, then leave it, dude. Yeah. Be a man. Don't, <laughs> right. Don't just take off to Uzbekistan. <laughs> right. And you're, what about your kids, dude? Like. I know. Even. That is bull snit. Yeah, because then they're going to get all that heat and they're going to have to go to school with the people. Who, well, they thought you were dead, bro. Yes. Ah. Uh, yeah. You know, this weeks upon weeks of my dad's missing and my dad. Yeah. And it turns out I'm a, just a big asshole uh-huh. going to Uzbekistan to hook up with some broad with a unibrow. Some hairy broad. Yeah, dude. Hairy like animal. I guess the 375 would have kept you. Right. <laughs> gonna, kept you there I'm for I'm going to go a... drive in my Lambo and think about this. Yeah, yeah. He's going <laughs> to Lambo. It's going to be one of those like starting with a hand crank things. <laughs> <laughs> Replay today, the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Workman's Relief, for whatever the job throws at you. Like THC products derived from legal hemp. These are legit delicious. Free shipping with products over $75. Order yours at workmansrelief.com. For whatever the job throws at you. Get up with Johnny and D. JJO. Do you have any, uh, philias? Excuse you? <laughs> Yeah, there's some people that get a, you know get the rocks off on certain things. Um, I do. I do not believe I do have like a foot fetish or oh. any sort of fetish. I guess uh, that's Ophelia. That's uh, you know. I would think of Ophelia from Oph- <laughs> Shakespeare. Um, I, no, I I do like pretty vanilla. I like nylons. It's a weird thing. Really? Yeah. I do. I, when I touch them, I I don't like it. It you know it's like. Ugh, it gives me that thing where you kind of like, oh, yeah. you, I just, the, the feel of nylon is, I like the look of them, yeah. but the feel just is like, ah, I can't do it. I don't think I have one. Hmm. I don't know if butts is one, but. Probably, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. So anyway. Uh, we all know Lance. <laughs> Dr. Mark Griffith is a social psychologist who studies paraphilia. Uh. Which colloquial search his browser yeah, history is known as a fetish. So they researched this. He's a, um, in, in a news article of the professor of behavioral addiction in Nottingham Trent Uni- University revealed the five most shocking sexual obsessions he's ever come across. Uh, paraphilias or fetishes um, are accompanied by intense sexual arousal or unconventional or non sexual stimuli, such as enemas, which is. Good timing. Uh, Statues. There's actually a a stat. uh, People get uh, turned on by statues. Uh, Agalamatophilia. That's the statue one? Yeah. Teeth is odontophilia? Yeah, sure. Vomit? Dude, no. Emetophilia. So anyway, uh, he wrote in the new book, Sexual Perversions and uh, Paraphilias, and A to Z guide. Okay. <laughs> Are you serious? This is what this doctor's this is a put. It's a coffee table book. Well, hey, man, you, you know, some people don't know what the hell is wrong with them. They think that, you know, you could be Army Hammer, which is one. Um, it says too many people of people, paraphilias may seem bizarre and socially unacceptable, representing an extreme end of the sexual con- continuum. And in some cases, such as zoophilia, having sex with animals, and necrophilia, having sex with dead people, may be illegal. Crack open uh, a cold one. Yes. Uh, a spite of the taboo, sexual fantasies, however uh, strange and fundamental to human experience, there's a pressing need for more research into fetish. So they don't know, you know. Not here to kink shame. Yeah, they say even the most disastrous criminal is essential to help safeguard vulnerable groups. Uh, research can also help minimize the discrimination faced by those who have uncommon sexual interests helping ensure their access to sexual health care and psychological support, which can be lacking. So the, the five most that he had was vorerophilia. Vorerophilia, that's it. 
Um, this one's pretty nuts. It's perhaps one of the most high prolific examples of Verifilo's date was that actor Army Hammer, mm-hmm. who was accused of you know by his ex girlfriend of harboring cannibalism fa- fantasies. However, rumors That's about the so Call Me Your Name star almost de- uh, debased uh, proclavities pale in comparison to Armin Muse and Bernard John Badress. Do you, if you remember them, that's the real life uh, Verera Filiax from Germany. He's the one, this this dude right here. Okay. So he was the one, I don't know if you remember, <laughs> if you remember kind of scared me. Yeah. Uh, he was around 600, there was like posted about 60 online advertisements seeking someone who would agree to be eaten before meeting Bernard Bong, B- Bandres. In March of 2002, he's allowed Muse to bite off the tip of his penis so that the two of them could eat the flesh together before stabbing Bardes to death, uh. <laughs> all of which videotaped uh, Muse was sentenced to murder and currently serving a life sentence. So I didn't know about the you know chow down on the ding dong, yeah. but um, e proctophilia, what do you think that is? I, I couldn't even guess. Procto? But. Yeah, claims established studies of it. Proctophilia is, uh, this is people that are turned on by flatulence. Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 22-year-old American with Illinois recalled his crush on a girl who farted in school. I love her. And he's like, yeah. Why is, why, is, why is the tree good? Why is the sunset good? Why, why are boobs, boobs good? good? Uh, this blew my mind. I knew in my simple biology that girls farted, but hearing the girl uh, I had been fawning over is capable of such a thing, sparking a strange interest in me. It's, <laughs> it's funny because I just saw something like this. <laughs> it's of tracks of farts wasn't limited to women. Uh, he learned as a teenager. Gross. <laughs> as he and a male friend agreed to uh, settle re- uh, no. regular bets by alarm, the winner to fart in the loser's face. <laughs> Now you get pink eye, dude. He kept losing the bets on purpose. Oh, my God. For about two. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. uh, A potenmophilia. Uh, This one both realized amputation involved in uh, some amputation. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. A pentenophilia's need only to fantasize about being amputated and engaging in sex with someone who is. Whoa. Um, so that's that's another one. You know, you do that stump stuff. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, decrephilia. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, decrephiliacs are turned on by tears. <laughs> <laughs> in yeah, in your tears. Oh, no. <laughs> cry, let's cry about it so I can get off. Uh, Griffiths has found three subtypes of people who fetishize crying. Uh, compassionate types that are aroused by the empathy, dominant and submissive types that are uh, maybe induced or experienced crying amid power play, and the curled up lip, uh, those type of philias. That's the... Uh, that who is focused on the subject of protruding lower lip. Like, you know? Yeah, the Bloodhound Gang song, that lap dance is always better when the stripper is crying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love that one. Uh, Celerophilia. Um, that's getting down and dirty in the aim. Of, that's, the, that's what their aim is. Uh, who are aroused by the sight of filth and unkept bedmates. Oh. Yuck. That's the worst one, like I think. Them, Even the cannibal me. one's not as bad as this one. Right? <laughs> oh, uh, no. He wrote in one case study that a 58-year-old Australian man who frequently masturbated in dusty and grim places such as a garage under furniture uh, as an adolescent. Uh, as he got older, his obsession with the muck group of uh, two partners. Um, so he found it difficult to find like-minded women. So he wanted to find some dirty. a real dirty, nasty oh, bitch. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Get over here, you gamey broad. Yeah, smelling like wow. uh, cabbage. <laughs> his fetish was not limited to strictly sexual context. Uh, confessing that he was um, also aroused by gross-out reality competition shows like Fear Factor. Uh, in which contestants perform disgusting stunts for money. I hope you're happy, that, Joe Rogan. Yeah, and Michael Yo, he was the one of the first yeah. guys who t- ate an eyeball. Remember? Yep. Um, I just find it. Uh, Man, I defil- feel so very normal. <laughs> I know. I find defilement of an attractive woman, uh, a woman's body erotic. That's what he. <laughs> that's so. There you go, man. Those are the five. Man, um, we're killing it, one, dude. You know, if you if you. Uh, you 
Find a spot. Leave it to two dudes that are like, we're going to settle our bits by <laughs> farting each, each other's faces. <laughs> well, the poor guy didn't know he was yeah, turning the other guy on. Used. He's like yeah. blasting, you know, wolf <laughs> eggs right in his Jesus face. <laughs> he's like, <sighs> like a bong hit, you know? He's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, the fetishes that are out there, it. I mean, if these are the top five, I've seen some other ones that are, I mean, <laughs> obviously, it, it's just You don't want to know. Yeah, like. yeah, it's weird. So, well, I don't have any like that. I can tell you that. I'm just attracted to butts and legs. I guess that's, does that make me weird? No, it's a host of other <laughs> things that make you weird, dude. It's, uh, that's the most normal thing about you, really. <laughs> I'm looking up the philia for butts and not dudes' butts. <laughs> Cowboys' butts. Pygophilia. Touching a person's buttocks. Mm. Yeah, pygophilia. Yeah, so I guess that would make me that. Uh, there's ones that are like feet, hair, eyes, um, interest in breasts. This is uh, Johnny. Mesophilia. It's funny because he lived in Mesa. Yeah, right? Mesophilia. <laughs> yeah. Nasophilia? He is a boob dude. You like digging in people's noses? No. Uh, navels. What? Alvinophilia. Man, I just, I feel very vanilla right now. Very vanilla. That's what I said. A trichophilia. Trichophilia is the interest in hair, sexual interest of hair, and obviously pedophilia. Podophilia. What is that? Podophilia is your feet. I know oh, yeah, podiatrist, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the feet people be, they're prevalent on the interwebs. People yeah. be selling like their socks That's, on Etsy and stuff. Yeah. I know somebody that is, and I'm not going to call them out, but I don't know. Actually, I know several people that I don't understand it. I'm not a foot dude, man. No way. Maybe if they're all upkept and all that stuff, but I don't know where that comes from. I bet you it's high school because that's the only time you could see like open toed shoes and that was it. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. You're like, oh man, that's where it is. She actually touched my arm, man. <laughs> Those days, it didn't take much. It is. I I do wonder where like it comes from, you I, know, like I, why? Where did this nylon thing come from? Like, why do I? Why is that hot? I don't. Uh, know. Yeah, I don't know. Hooters what? girls, I believe. Maybe Hooters girls. I don't. Yeah, you would think. Yeah, because I don't know where that. Where, I mean, mine's mine's pretty simple. I don't think yeah. I have. <laughs> I'm not, I don't get, I watch you know, like, crazy stuff. I just don't do it. Some of those people that like be wearing all the crazy outfits and stuff. And I'm sure there's, you, uh, me. you can't be doing that every time. Are you like, well, my understanding like that takes a lot of prep time. You do all that stuff and I'm sure it's like, you know, they think about it all day and then they do it. And, but you take it. I don't know. It just takes, you, once you do one thing. That's gonna turn into something else. You start chasing that rabbit down the hole. Next thing you know, because you're, you're not. This isn't farted do- in your face. Yep, you're getting blasted in your face. Face farts. You can learn a lot listening to podcasts. And only three countries in the world don't use the metric system. Or you can listen to this one. I can't remember where I went Friday. Oh my god. Oh my god. What did I do on Friday? I gotta check my calendar. <laughs> If anybody saw me Friday, call The JJO Morning Show Podcast. I literally have no idea where I was Friday. Workman's Relief, for whatever the job throws at you. Like THC products derived from legal hemp. These are legit delicious. Free shipping with products over $75. Order yours at workmansrelief.com. For whatever the job throws at you. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO. Very thorough. Yeah, uh, very thorough. There's a uh, new study out. One in three Gen Z workers are too scared to use the office bathroom. What are they scared <laughs> of? What's happening that they're well, scared? <clears throat> well, we'll get into that. Uh, for a generation that likes to expressing their emotions, uh, Gen Z keeps a lot of things bottled up inside, especially their poo. <laughs> a whopping one in three Zoomers is scared to use the bathroom at the office, according to a recent study that surveyed more than 1,000 employees 
on their workplace poo habits and calculated that the impact of bathroom breaks on a company's productivity. Ah. Right? <laughs> so you also have to think about that. They found that a surprising number of office workers are reticent about taking a dump at work. According to the study, one in 12 employees has never pooped at work, while 34% are scared to use the facilities. Because they don't want people to hear them tooting? Uh, I think. Or walk uh, into their poo cloud? Yeah, nearly one in five employees, around 19%, outright re- refuse to crap at their place of employment, while the other... Uh, well, well, this one is mind-blowing to me. Yeah, well, one in four choose to hold it in until they get home. And my kid does that. He doesn't want to. <laughs> 11% of Gen Z employees claim that they've never pooed at work, while 36% what? are reportedly too scared to do so. Uh, there's Don't also, be scared. There's also a gender disparity uh, uh, dropping the kids off at the pool. <laughs> uh, nearly half of the women are scared to poop at work, and 48%. You know, compared everybody to 19% poops, of bro. Them. Everybody poops. So it's all women. They just, and the reasons, like you said, they're toilet shy is a lack of privacy was the greatest concern of employees. 59% followed by embarrassment about the smell, 57%. Uh, then the noise concerns of 47%. Yeah. Well, I've read stories before where people bring in poop shoes so that, <laughs> <laughs> that when they go... To the bathroom, they change their shoes so that if anybody sees their feet <laughs> underneath know. the stall, they won't know that it's them. I was like, y'all are caring too much about if someone hears you toot. Who cares? When I was at a different job, I have done it here too, but because I, I saw Johnny's foot, because when you stand there, they go to the urinal. I'll reach under and grab his foot, <laughs> but you got to be care- pretty quick because they'll pee on your hand. <laughs> but I've done that, and then they'll pee on your shoe. So I'll do that if I'm sitting there, you know? <laughs> Oh my Reach god! Terrible. What, I was weird because when I was a kid, I, I I was so used to when before I'd take a shower, or I, before I'd take a bath or whatever, I'd poo. Yeah, right. Because then I would want to be clean with and empty. That right. way, there's no residuals, or you go back in and it's just dirty and up the oil again. All right, Howard Hughes. So <clears throat> I would do that before I'd go. Yeah, but I'd take off. I was so used to taking off all my clothes. This is when I was a little kid. So when I'd go to the public and I had to go to the bathroom, I took off all my clothes. The naked pooper, dude. I was a naked pooper. Oh, no. I remember doing it at the Westgate Mall. <laughs> <laughs> my clothes were just all on the... And then I was a, such a dumb kid, I'd leave my clothes because you're not really thinking about dirt and people pee- peeing on the floor and right. stuff like that. So I left my clothes on the floor. But I'm like, you just, you know, that's just gross. I just made it worse. Right, but yeah, you're not but thinking you that. needed the freedom. You needed, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't have it on me. I felt like I was going to poo on something, but then I threw it on the poo floor. Yeah, God, I wish I could go back and smack myself in the head. It's okay. You were just, yeah, it's just stupid. I don't know, <sighs> but I never had a well. I'm just a boy. I trying think to ev- poop. I think everybody has a problem when they're doing that if they knew all the people. But then when I went into the military, that changed tremendously. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> then you're doing it sitting next to somebody yeah. talking. Like we're talking right now. <laughs> you don't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. So that's a different story. But um, That's so wild to me. I I don't understand what the, 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 why are you so worried about it? Like literally every, everybody poops. Because it's the, you know, you, you think about a woman, they don't want to be known for smelling, you know? Whatever. You're in there dropping big steamers. I know it. It's. Y- yeah. Dropping big old poops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Reminds me. Just, I'm not going to say it. But there's, because Lindsay, our VP. Yeah. <laughs> so I was giving her crap at one of the soccer games about having big old poops. <laughs> I love it. I'll tell you later. It was funnier. <laughs> um so uh, many employees claimed holding it causes them to suffer from various health problems. Just go poop, <laughs> you dummy! <laughs> Abdominal discomfort, heightened stress, and even constipation. Employers are finding it to be costly for them, too. Uh, companies have lost an estimated average of 3565 per remote employee, while 2833 is lost in in-office poopers every year due to time spent in the bathroom while on the clock, according to the research. So that's a lot of money. Yeah. Lost sitting there. Oftentimes, employees are simply using the bathroom breaks. They're meme to... farming, you asshole. Yeah. 
They're using it as an excuse to take a nap. One in five reportedly used it for that purpose. Uh, I've napped in the bathroom, not here, but at other jobs. What, did you just do the hunch over or what? Hands yeah, in. you just lean on the wall. Oh, yuck! <laughs> I guess. A snooze. Tell me it wasn't a unisex where the pee can get up there. You know, there's particles over there. I don't care. I was tired. I wanted to take a little snooze, and I did. Uh, Ugh. No. Um, I mean, I'll, if I did that, what I used to do, because I'd get so tired all the time and have to go to work, I'd take a nap real quick, like a five minute. Well, if I'm, do, might as well do two in one thing, you know? I'd put my hand like crossed over like you're laying on a desk. Yeah. But then I was flexible enough I can just lay on my on my knees. Yeah. You know? So I just head down. It's not the most comfortable of things. It's like a fetal position almost while you're crowned up on the toilet. Yeah, dude. But uh, yeah, I don't, I've done it. Just not now. I just there's no way that it, it it can't be good for you, and then you're all bound up to hold it for that long. Yeah, Hell no, of course it isn't, dude. I'm a, I'm worried about people. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did we get here? <laughs> Easy, <laughs> you know. There's a lot of things that. <laughs> This just go gen- poop, dude. I don't, and I don't know if it's justice, but they said this is the this this generation is well more you know is way more um, likely. Nobody cares other. that you're pooping, man. <clears throat> you know? Do you co- think that people like are like, oh my god, they're in there, they're in there going poop? Well, dude, it can cause constipation because it builds up. Yeah, and you end up with this huge you're brown impacted, baby boy. Yeah. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Nobody's talking about you pooping unless it's Lindsay. Then we're talking. About <laughs> She's going to be so mad at me. I'm in so much trouble. Uh, I'm probably going to get written up for that. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> it could cause constipation, hemorrhoids, <clears throat> anal fissures. That's not, that never sounds good. No. Fecal impaction. Yeah. Hard, dry mass tool gets stuck in a colon and wrecked them. And then next thing you know, it's like a baseball. Uh, gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal perforation, it, the where the a hole develops in the yeah. wall of your gastrointestinal oh, no. tract. That's not good. Bro, That's bad. I don't bad. know how to make this better for everybody. Rectal like, how hyposensitivity. How do I make you understand yeah. it's okay to poop? Pelvic floor dysfunction. Uh, it makes then you won't work right next time and making it difficult. You're making it. Yeah, this is bad. Yeah, juju. dude. Not me. I even like Hell killed no. two birds at one stone by eating in the toilet. No, we don't do that. No. <laughs> You've gone too far. I've You've had spaghetti on the too, toilet. <laughs> Doing it also increases your risk of bowel cancer. I'm sure. And a prolapse. You don't look like a tulip. Yeah. Oof. Buddy. Yeah, you got to make sure you're this. And then how are you concentrating at work? Because I know when I have to poop, that's all oh. I'm thinking about. Yes. All I'm thinking about is like, oh my God, I need to poop. You'll go over to your mom's grave. Just, <laughs> I've had that happen. Yeah. You know, everybody has. You're down, the, you know, where it is like now when you get that panic look on your face. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst when you're like on the highway and you're like the exit. There's nowhere to go. Uh, you got to plan that out. I know it's happened to you when you're going, when oh you hit that God. right be- right between Lake Mills and. and uh, Cottage Grove. The, well, it's not Cottage Grove. It would be the 73. Oh. Right, for Marshall and Deerfield, mm-hmm. yeah, there's, there's that there's, stretch mm-hmm. where you're close enough but not close, where you can't go anywhere. It's you're the st- wasteland, dude. Oh, dude, it's bad. Yep, and you just gotta just hold on, soldier. Uh, you you get to the Doyle's dog, uh, <laughs> yep, sign, and you're like, oh you're no, clo- yep. oh no, uh huh, one hundred percent. I just didn't the drama these people have. Like you're just making more problems for yourself. Just walk. Listen to me. Get up from your desk. Walk to the bathroom. You don't even have to change your shoes. I promise you, nobody cares that you're taking a poop. <laughs> I know. So I get when you don't want to do it in a, um, you know, an outhouse or a, or a, what are those called? The porta potty. Yeah, there you go. The porta potty. So that makes, Port-a-lent. you know, fear of pooping is called <laughs> parco precis. Uh, parco precis? Yeah, parco precis. Why uh, shy bowel syndrome? 
shy bowel. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Psychogenic fecal retention is an anxiety disorder that make it difficult or impossible to have a bowel movement in public. People with parkopresis may fear being judged of the sound, smell, and defecation. That is. Uh, it, That's what it is. Parkopresis. Yeah. So You're this not is, being judged. How? Well, again, tell somebody else that they're, you know what I mean? It's hard to Nobody's tell. Nobody's talking about you pooping. <laughs> it's, yeah. This is just insane to me. Yes, they are. <laughs> no, they're not. Yes, they are. Do not poop. Lindsay. <laughs> the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Catch a new show every Monday through Friday, 6 till 10 a.m. on 941 JJO or streaming anywhere in the JJO app. Johnny and D. Nowhere but J.J.O.